Brittany, and I am the watercolor artist and calligrapher from Alberta, Canada. And you are joining me here in my studio. And after teaching modern calligraphy with Mont Blanc for nearly three years, I'm so excited to introduce this brand new series today, Integrating Art into Your Writing Practice. I love integrating ink into my drawings and calligraphy into my paintings. And so I'm so thrilled that I get to show you both um, in you know, one particular piece and just show you how much fun it is as well. So I can't wait uh, to, to kind of teach you about both of my passions and hopefully start a lifelong journey of combining ink with your calligraphy as well. I'm gonna be using three Mont Blanc writing instruments that I'm very excited to show you. One of them is a curved nib, one of them is a flexible nib, and then I'm using my rollerball pen because I, I wanna show you that everything we're doing today can be accomplished using any writing instrument, but you can get some really fun different effects depending on the writing instrument that you're using. So if you have taken my calligraphy series already, you know that I always say that calligraphy is more like drawing your letters as a series of individual strokes than it is like writing. So today you're going to be doing the same thing and we're going to break down a subject like flowers into a series of individual shapes. So same idea, you can see sort of the pattern and the way that your brain is thinking to do calligraphy is actually going to be quite applicable when we're drawing florals as well. This is absolutely a skill that can be learned and practice makes progress. So I hope when you leave here today, that's something you remember in the back of your mind is Brittany said, practice makes progress. There's no such thing as perfection in calligraphy in art in anything in life. And all we're doing is building what's called muscle memory. So right now your hand has never potentially done this before. And so we actually have to build muscle memory in our hand uh, in order to have your brain be able to tell your hand what to do and for you to be able to execute that. Today, I wanna to teach you florals because I really think that they're the best subject to build that muscle memory in your hand and the understanding of sort of basic shapes and line work. Like I said, I kind of think of drawing florals as the gateway into learning kind of all basics of drawing because they don't have to be too perfect. There's no straight lines, which is super important. So we're not drawing things like architecture and buildings. And we're simply going to break down each flower into a series of easy shapes that we all know, like circles and C curves and S curves. The goal here is to move fast. We're trying to build actually muscles in our finger joints. This up and down motion is really important when you're drawing. So we're flexing and releasing, flexing and releasing. So in all of these exercises, that's kind of the muscle memory that we're trying to build here. So you can watch me do it for a moment um, and then you can either trace along or do your own. So again, I'm not gonna trace exactly what's on my page, but I'm just gonna start moving fast across the page and fill one line up. So now let's move on to creating our leaf shape. And it's very simple. It's a series of three steps. The first step is you create that first C curve. Always great when you're creating a leaf shape to identify the full curve of the stem. And once you have the stem down, you can start creating C curves on either side. So that one I made in an upward motion, I could do it upward again, or I could move down doesn't matter at this point. The idea is to just understand that you always want to create your stem first and then do your C curves on either side of the stem symmetrically when we're first learning to just understand the basic component of a leaf. So it is a personal preference. It's totally up to you. With my smaller writing instruments, I do cap it. And then with my larger ones, I don't. If you're using a special edition writing instrument from Mont Blanc, for example, um, you would want to look at the care instructions for that writing instrument because some of them are not meant to be capped on the barrel. Okay, so now let's get into how we apply those C curves and those S curves to actually creating floral shapes. So something essential that I really, really, really want you to remember at the end of this class, because I see it when beginners are learning all the time, is that all of your petals have to point back to the center of the stem. So sometimes when we're a beginner, we might create a flower. I'll just draw an example of what not to do up here, where this is the center and maybe we start off okay, but then we start creating petals that are a little bit all over the place and they're not pointing back to this center. 
So the idea is, and you can trace along here, you want to create your C curve, identify that center point at the end of the stem, and we can create those coil shapes to make sure that everything is leading back to that center point. So even again, we're going to start with pencil and we'll erase it after, but this is a really good way to just get your composition going is by just creating coil shapes all around the center of that flower. And what you do once you sort of have an idea here is you can start to mimic your petal shapes from there. So all of these petals are now in the front of my flower. These petals are going to be in the back, but we know that they're all pointing back to the center. We're identifying where that center point is. We're creating kind of our basic shape with our coils. And then we can start to go in and add our C curves. And it's a really simple way to know how to draw every flower. So much easier to draw from an actual real life example than just making it up in your head. And we also have some of the sepal here. And so I would start to actually draw that in. All C curves. So we're breaking down each flower as a series of individual strokes. And where do we see the light hitting the most? It's kind of at the top here. And so some of our more shading lines would be mimicking our C curves from the bottom and leaving them a little bit less detailed at the top. Make this a little bit more organic and have some of those petals at a different perspective here. And again, we're not capturing it exactly. I don't know exactly if I've if I have exactly as many petals as you're seeing here on the real flower, but the idea is that you get the general shape um, and the idea. And once you have it laid out in pencil, then you can go and use your ink. So let's work on creating our um, poppy because you can use this idea of creating your C curve first, finding your center point and understanding your perspective to draw any flower. So with a poppy, we're gonna be looking at it almost as if you were looking at it like this. So most of the leaves would be on the outside, but you can kind of see the center of the flower here. That's the angle that we're drawing at. So sometimes it's helpful to draw that C curve, find your center point, making sure that you're always following that C curve first. And then we're gonna create almost like a cylinder shape over top of it where half of the center of the flower is still visible. Because right here, we're looking at, we're drawing this center of the flower as if we could see it because it just helps understand the anatomy of the flower. So we're pretending like we can see that full center of the flower, but now we're gonna create that cylinder shape over top when we leave a little bit still peeking through. So this is your invisible line kind of going down the center where your stem comes from. You're creating that ball for your center shape on top where, where the center of the flower is. Then you're creating your funnel shape. And now we're going to do our C curves for our petals and our leaves. So we start again with pencil and we just identify, you can copy my example up here. Maybe there's one flat, one petal right here, another petal peeking out the side here. And these are the petals in the back. I always like to have odd numbers of petals instead of four, I like to have five. So I'm gonna have another little one peeking through here. And I'm drawing really hard because I want you to be able to see it. But if you can, do lighter pencil. You start to see once you erase some of those structural lines, you can see half the center peeking out here and your petals starting to take form. Again, we're not trying to create the most realistic flower in the world, but helpful to understand what angle we're looking at the flower at. 
And then we can start to add the details with our pen. And again, you'll always want to go back. Like for me, that's that stem is a little bit too wide for the actual poppy for me. So that's something I would want to go back and do again. But the idea is to always know where your center point is, identify what perspective you're looking at the flower at, and then try to mimic the overall shape using the C and S curves that we learned today. So what we're going to be doing is combining ink and drawing. And so we're going to be using some different ink colors um, to uh, create some swatches, and then we're going to be drawing inside of those. Uh, we're also going to be working, again, expanding on our drawing skills that we learned today and combining those with ink. So if you ideally just have a couple of sheets of watercolor paper, again, I'd be happy to point you in the right direction. Um, that would be awesome. And we are going to be learning exactly how to do something like this. Another one I love um, that I've painted in, in ink first, and then I've gone over top and used my black Mont Blanc ink with a paintbrush to add these floral details. Another example where I have painted the florals first and then gone over top of it with ink to add details. Sunflowers, roses for Alberta, wild rose. Super fun techniques that you can do with ink like this. I am going to be using my extra fine nib, which I love to draw with. So this is my Meisterstück with an extra fine nib, and that just refers to the width of the line that I'm going to be drawing. So it's quite delicate. If you have a medium nib, you're just going to have a bit of a thicker stroke, like you see an example of the poppy here. I'm also going to be using my flexible nib. So if you've taken my intro to calligraphy series, um, I use the flexible nib a lot specifically for calligraphy, but there is a lot of overlap today on using a flexible nib when you're drawing in that when you want a thicker stroke when you're drawing, you can press down on the flexible nib and it'll widen the tines on the nib um, and that way you get a thicker stroke. Uh, but in general, all you need today is a writing instrument with ink to follow along. And then once you fall in love, like I know you will, uh, then you're going to want to experiment with all of your writing instruments to apply the techniques that we're learning today. The next most important tool is ink. But I'm going to show you how to dilute your ink to paint with it. That's kind of the essence of today. And I'm going to be talking to you about what's called permanent ink and what's called water-soluble ink. So a lot of the Mont Blanc fountain pen inks are water-soluble, which means that if you add water, um, then it's going to kind of, you're, you're able to blend it out and paint with it easily. But it also means that if you're writing with water-soluble ink and then you apply water to it, that ink is going to bleed. Versus permanent ink, when you lay down um, the ink and you apply water to it, it's not going to smudge or bleed. In essence, what we're learning today is called line and wash. So this is definitely a technique that's known all over the world, but is just specifically of interest um, to me as an artist. And I really am excited to share it with you. So what that means is the line of line and wash. The line is your drawing. So the line is your drawing. And the wash is your diluted ink or your watercolor. So line and wash is the integration of ink and watercolor. So there's a couple of ways to do line and wash. The first is that you start um, with your wash and create your line drawing on top. So we would start by painting kind of basic shapes in watercolor, and then you would add your line on top of that. So this is really great if you want to add form to a really quick watercolor sketch. And then we get into option two here, which is where you start with your line drawing and then you add a wash of color after that. So in this floral example that I have on the right here, I started with my line drawing. So I started with the, the pen work and then I went in and added my wash afterwards. So we want to start with the wash. And again, um, when you start with the wash, you're creating your, you know, ink swatch or you're creating your watercolor swatch first, and then you're adding your details on top once it's dry. So it has to be completely dry to the touch, and then you add your details on top. So I have lots of examples um, to show you here. 
to hopefully inspire you. This is a really simple example. So that's why I included it in the workbook here. So all I did with my Mont Blanc ink in yellow and the sapia orange color um, is I laid down a few kind of gestural strokes with my paintbrush. Once it was dry, I went in and created these sort of basic petal shapes, adding some line work details afterwards. So I included that in your workbook so you have something to go off of. Another fun example is just having a bookmark. So I cut out a piece of watercolor paper. I did a basic wash in the center. And then you can just go in with your C curves. And remember, you kind of want leaves bigger at the bottom, kind of slowly getting smaller towards the top. C curve, S curve. And you can go in and add as much line work as you want. Up, down, up. Really simple, starting with wash, adding our line technique. So I create these bookmarks usually as gifts for people, which takes us into our final lesson here today, which is on line first. So we're going to start with our line and then do our wash. So let's move into that now. And I want to show you my Mont Blanc sketchbook for this because I mentioned that you can do this technique really using any paper. But because I don't want to spill this ink everywhere, let me move that out of the way first. Okay, so this is my Mont Blanc sketchbook. And this is where I did the line first using my permanent ink. So I did permanent ink for my line drawing first. And then I went in with my wash. So this is another example where I did the line first and then I did the wash line first and then wash so very simple i did these just for you guys today to show you that you don't necessarily have to be super artistic to do this style um, but you can create some basic leaf shapes and then wait for that ink to dry and then you go in um, and do your wash afterwards and then today we're going to be bringing together all of the skills that I've been able to teach you so far in this Mont Blanc Inspire Writing community uh, with calligraphy, drawing, and painting. So the first step is you find your month and you see, okay, what does your flower look like? And instead of just getting overwhelmed and thinking, how could I possibly, um, where do I even start? Again, we want to break it down into a series of individual shapes. So with the daisy, you know, if we're just, let's say we're just focusing on one stem right now, we have a C curve, C curve, C curve. And now we want to find where the center of the flower is. So the center of the flower is about here. And then you would create in pencil first that light sort of grid for yourself. And the center is actually a little bit higher up towards the top. So you know, those top petals are going to be smaller than the bottom petals. The bottom petals are getting bigger because they're closer towards us. So again, very simple ways. And then you would go in um, on top with your ink afterwards and start, you know, roughing up the leaves a little bit, maybe adding some shading detail, and then you would erase your pencil grid afterwards. You always want to remember the most important thing when it comes to drawing um, is that you all of your petals and all of your leaves should be pointing back to the center of the floor. And so as we get into our practice here and how we're going to end our class, I've created a couple of boxes. The first box is for you to practice drawing the basic shapes of your birth flower. So if your birth flower was that peony, you would start with that C curve, identify where the center was, create your sort of outline for yourself so you know, you know, how tall and how wide the flower is. And then you can go over top. Again, I'm using pencil to identify where the top where the front facing petals are, then you would go in the back. All of them should be pointing back to that center point. Again, you wanna examine the actual anatomy of the flower and what a peony leaf actually looks like. Is it really big um, and full or is it maybe small and skinny? So again, you would wanna look at the actual flower to help you make some of those decisions. But the most important thing is that everything points back to the center. Then you would go down here and start practicing your name. So again, you can use pencil if you'd like, but this is meant just for practice. And so um, if you don't already have this, like I said, you can download this um, as a printable on my website, uh, peakpaperco.com slash Mont Blanc. 
Um, and that way, if you want to try your hand at doing modern calligraphy, you have something to reference here. And so you would start practicing, you know, individual strokes, making your connection points. And that way, when it's time to actually integrate those in the top right box, you have something started. Slow and controlled. And I'm still, when I'm creating, you know, my final scripted stem, I'm always going to start with um, with my pencil first. And again, I was born in September, so I'm going to do the aster. So I'll start with drawing the floral. So I'm going to create that light C curve. I'm going to identify where the center point of the flower is, create that little grid for myself. And asters like have really sort of skinny and tall leaves. So I usually like to start with the four quadrants on a flower and then sort of fill it in. I think the center should be a little bit wider. Again, why it's so great to work in pencil first. And I'm just using C curves. Tuck some in behind to make it look fuller. With my ink after, I'll add some detail. Maybe I want to add just one or two leaves up here near the top. And now I'm going to integrate my name into this stem. And so about, you know, maybe a quarter of the way up the stem that I've laid out for myself in pencil, I'm going to write my name over top of it. Again, you can use your cursive writing as well. The idea is that we're just adding some, you know, interest and personality here. And instead of leaving that stem line, I'm going to create a little flourish at the beginning of the B as the beginning of the stem, same thing with the Y. I'm going to create that final flourish of the Y to be the first part of that stem. So the beauty of doing this in pencil first is that you can erase the lines that you're not going to be using once you ink it up. So the idea is once you have your pencil sketch in a way that, you know, you really like, like I don't like that flourish that I just did for the B. And so maybe I'm going to do a little something more subtle. And you're turning the stem of the flower um, into, you know, its own little work of art. And once you actually complete an, uh, the, the wash component and adding sort of little bits of color, then you end up with this really, really beautiful effect. Another really simple way uh, we did this exercise in the last class where you're just laying down simple bits of wash and then adding a stem over top of that. And same thing, you're adding uh, the your wording into maybe just a couple of the stems. It's just a really, really simple and fun way to integrate calligraphy um, into your drawing. I So we've already kind of talked through these real, tangible, life-changing effects of integrating a practice like this into your life. Uh, but the way, the way that you can experience those benefits is by getting into flow state. I like to describe it like it's this experience of um, time passing without you realizing. You're uh, completely present. You're not circling on your to-do list and having your mind run a, a mile a minute. Being in a flow state is kind of the opposite of burnout. It's when we let our brains rest and restore. And that's so, so, so important that we're not always on a level 10 stress, right? And I think probably a lot of us feel like we are often at a level 10 stress. So if we can bring that down even somewhat through some really simple techniques like you see on the page um, that we're about to work on in front of you, it's 100% worth it. So the last page of your workbook is a little mindfulness art exercise as your homework. Um, the project that I'm leaving you with is to fill in all of these empty lines with line drawings. So, you know, take some examples um, from what I've included in here. Start integrating your own. Um, you can look up a technique called Zen Tangle. Zen Tangle. Z-E-N tangle. <laughs> and again, DM me on Instagram if you want me to say that again, but lots of fun ideas on ways to kind of take this pattern making um, and abstract art in a new direction and use your fountain pens and your inks and your beautiful writing instruments in new ways. I even added just some calligraphy to one of my leaves down here. Sometimes I even end up 
wanting to write illegibly um, just to build that muscle memory in my hand and give the effect of a script being written in one of the leaves. But the goal is that, you know, you're filling these leaves with um, different line drawings that help you build muscle memory, but also help you experience all of the benefits that we talked about today in being present in paying attention to the sound of the pen on the paper, the way the ink is flowing across the page, the pressure you're using, the scale that you're drawing at. And I'm so excited to be able to share yet another passion of mine with you all uh, and hopefully just inspire your creativity because I believe that we are all inherently creative um, and it's as evidenced by everything we created together here today. So thank you again so, so much. Um, I would love to see your exercises and share just how simple and effective mindfulness art can be with all of your friends and family members as well.